Hello everyone! My name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you. And today we're going to talk about the level up rewards for Zexal now that everyone's hit level 40. We've got some exciting new cards added to the game and it's going to be a lot of fun moving forward. So, we'll go in order here. For Yuma, oh, real quick, we are getting box chips for all the characters. All the characters are going to get 10 box chips instead of the UR gem that we got before. The UR gem was basically worthless, so 120 extra box chips is fantastic. I'm definitely going to use this to get some good URs from the old boxes. Um, thinking about probably Into the Void and Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Let me know what you guys are going to get in the comments below. But regardless, for Yuma's level 38, we are getting another copy of Double or Nothing. This is completely pointless. Uh, Double or Nothing is a searchable card once we get Utopia Double. I was kind of hoping that this would be Utopia Double. Um... I guess Utopia Double is probably going to be like his level 45 card, um, but regardless, I don't think Double or Nothing is a card that we need more than one copy of, really. So getting a second copy of it feels pretty bad. I don't think that anyone's going to play this card at two, so this is kind of a dead level up. It's a good card, but you don't you just only need one. Then we have Gauntlet Launcher. This is a rank six Xyz monster. It's completely generic: 2400 attack, 2800 defense. You can attach one Xyz material from this card, target one monster your opponent controls, and destroy it. So that is not once per turn. You can just pop two monsters on your opponent's field. They don't have to be face up, but that does require targeting. Um, how good is that right now? Uh, you can't get through Neo's Fusion with this. You can't destroy Leo Dancer or target um, Saber Dancer or get rid of Chaos Max. So this meta is really kind of hostile to a target and destroy effect, but... It's a generic rank 6. This could be used in Hazy Flames. Um, this could be used in, obviously, the Onomat deck that uses Gaga Sister. That deck is not very popular anymore, but there are still ways to play that deck. There's not that many generic rank 6. You could play this in Destiny Heroes and make it with Malicious and maybe um, Dangerous. Is that good? Destiny heroes definitely want more ways to destroy cards on their turn, but it, they're mostly looking for spell and trap removal, I think. They don't really need that many ways to destroy monsters because they have Trinity. So I don't really know what this deck is what card this what deck this card will see a home in, but I do think that it will be a decent card to play. Although I was kind of expecting it to see play in Constellars, but now that we're getting the skill where Constellars can only summon well, no, no, wait, no. That, that skill does let you special summon anything from the extra deck. Okay, maybe. We'll have to see. For Shark, we are getting two copies of Shark Fortress. Shark Fortress is a rank 5 dark monster. It's a fish monster, and it says, Your opponent cannot target monsters for attacks except this one. Once per turn, you can attach one Xyz material from this card, target one face of monster you control, and it can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Again, this is a card that you don't need more than one of, which is true of a lot of extra deck monsters, but in particular Shark Fortress. Um, it's not like there was much of a demand for fish to go into rank 5s to begin with, and really, this is competing with Crystal Zero, this is competing with um, Abyss Dweller. Is it good on your turn? Kind of? You can't make it in a deck that limits you from playing dark monsters. Um, and I think, I'm pretty sure that both Buzzsaw Shark and Lantern Shark lock you into water. No, Lantern Shark locks you into Xyz. Oh, oh, but, um... Buzzsaw Shark and Lantern Shark can't be used as level 5s except for water monsters. Ooh. How are you even making this, then? Realistically, how do you make this card? We don't have any of the level 5 sharks yet. This seems premature. Maybe they're going to give us that Abyss Splash deck finally. That's cope. Maybe they're going to give us the Abyss Splash deck finally. And if they do and we get some of the level 5s, okay then maybe this will see play. But for right now, there's just not really a good way to make it, because just because it's dark. If it was water, it'd be fantastic, really. But because it's dark, that makes it really awkward for sharks. 
Um, would the C play any kind of like generic rank five deck? Not really. There's a lot of really good rank fives that we have in the game already. Um, check my Eda 10 video if you want to see some of the good rank fives in the game. I don't think this card is better than cards like the wind-up card that pops two face-down cards. So, uh, not yet, but it could be good later. Rio gets an extra copy of both Ice Beast Zero Fine and Number 94 Crystal Zero. Complete waste. You don't need more than two copies of either one of these cards. Really, you don't need more than two cop more than one copy of Crystal Zero. You might run two copies of Zero Fine, but that's just because Harpies don't have that many good options. Uh, but three is definitely too much. Bronk gets Iron Draw. Um, if you control exactly two machine type effect monsters and no other monsters, draw two cards. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can only special summon once. You can only activate one Iron Draw per turn. So this is probably going to be good in Gimmick Puppets. Um, this is probably better than the Quattro level up for Gimmick Puppets. This is also probably good in Mech Lords. Mech Lords wanted to use the card that um, required that they only control two Mech Lord monsters. But the way that their turn worked out, that never happened because they went from Obligato into two level fours and then Weissel. So you had three. But if you exceed summon into Gyrgion X after that, then you have exactly two monsters. They're just not both Mech Lord monsters. This makes the Mech Lord turn one a lot better. And Mech Lords is already kind of like a low tier four deck. So I think this will definitely see play in Mech Lords. Will it be good enough to make Gimmick Puppets see play? Is the question. It's very easy for Gimmick Puppets to have exactly two effect monsters on the field because they have because they have the skill that lets them special summon two Gimmick Puppets from hand. The restriction that you only special summon once for the rest of the turn is kind of weird, but you could just exceed first or link first, and then if you end the board, if you end the turn with um, Gimmick Puppet Chimera Doll and Dingirsu, that's still two uh, machine effect monsters, so you could just play Iron Draw after that. Yeah, this this is definitely better than Advanced Draw, and Gimmick Puppets were already kind of wanting to run Advanced Draw, so I think this will see some play. Tori gets uh, Chaos Exceeds Dark Fairy Cheer Girl. This requires uh, Dark uh, Fairy Cheer Girl as material. When this card is sent to the, from the field to the graveyard, draw one card. And while it has Dark Fairy, while it has Fairy Chill Girl as material, it gains this effect when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and remains on the field. You could detach one Exceed material from this card to burn your opponent for 200 damage for each card in their hand. Is that good? No. Uh, this is a meme card for a meme deck, and Tori is not really a character. She never dueled. She doesn't need to be in the game. So this card fits her. All right. Kite gets Galaxy Brave. This is a level 8 light warrior monster with 0 attack points and 0 defense points. If this card is in your hand, you can reveal one photon monster and special summon this card, and if you do, its level becomes the level of that photon monster. If this card is normal or special summon, you can target one galaxy monster in your graveyard. This card's attack and defense points become that monster's attack and defense points. You can only use each effect of Galaxy Brave once per turn. So... This is an awkward card, because the Galaxy Photon deck doesn't really want to run Galaxy cards. Not Galaxy Monsters. And the Xyz Galaxy deck has no interest in Photons. So, um, you don't really want to make Galaxy Braves level anything other than 8. But the only level 8 Photon monster is Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. It's, it's kind of an awkward card to use. If you have Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon in your hand, you special summon this card as level 8, that's that's great. It's a good option. Um, but I'm not really sure what the line is. Uh, Goldmine was telling me that there is a way to use this card very effectively, and I've seen people play this card in Master Duel, so I know it's a, and a good starter if you have all the right cards. I just don't know that this is the time to use it yet, because we don't have Afterglow Dragon yet. Um, I'm going to hold my opinion on this. I think it's a I think it's better than the other cards, but I don't know that it's going to see play right now. 
and I'll be happy to be proven wrong. Trey gets Chronomaly Magella Globe. This card is broken. Uh, level 4, um, you contribute this card to special summon one Chronomaly monster from your deck except Chronomaly Magella Globe. If this card is in your graveyard except the turn it was sent there, you can banish one Chronomaly card from your graveyard and add this card to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. So, this card legitimately just lets you special summon Chronomaly monsters from your deck every single turn. And you're going to use it to get your Nebra disc and search another card and go into your Xyz place. So this is like a one-card starter for Chronomalies in addition to their other two one-card starters of Nebra disc and um, Tuspa Rocket. There's a question of like what the Chronomaly deck looks like. I think it's like three Nebra discs, three Tuspa Rockets, the two Magella Globes that we get, one copy of Chronomaly Moai, which you search with the Nebra disc, and then maybe one copy of Crystal Bones, and then 10 traps. Is that good? Yes, that's very good. Uh, will this make the Chronomaly deck see play? I do think this will make Chronomalies much more attractive, and the change to the skill also means that Chronomalies can run more traps than they did before. Barrage Blast is a very good card, and I think that with Barrage Blast can be more reliably paired with other cards to kind of hide it so that your opponent doesn't always know where Barrage Blast is and they can just remove it with one card, then that's going to make your deck significantly more of a threat. So Barrage Blast is kind of like a card that you only want to play when you can set three. And I think this change makes it so that Chronomalies can set three a lot more often. That's not good for the game, but it's good for Chronomaly players. So look forward to this. Hello, Beam. All right, uh, we have Quattro. Quattro gets... Gimmick Puppet Shadow Feeler. Um, it's a level 8 with 1,000 attack and defense points. It can't be destroyed by battle. When you take battle damage from an opponent's direct attack while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your graveyard in attack position, and if you do, take 500 damage. You can only use this effect once per turn. If this card is an Xyz material and would be sent to the graveyard, you banish it instead. So, like, if it's an Xyz material and it would be sent to the graveyard because your Xyz monster was destroyed by battle, or because you detached it to pay a cost, you banish this card instead. So, literally, the only way that you activate Shadow Feeler's effect is if you mill it with the skill, or if you mill it with Condolence Puppet. Is it good to have a card in your deck that you only want to mill? No. Um, is this effect worth milling? No. You have to take a direct attack, and then you special summon this card in attack position. Yes, it can't be destroyed by battle, but... And yes, you do. You take 500 damage, and you get to pre prevent basically the next 1,000 damage that you take. So as long as you would take at least 600 damage from, from, a next, from the next attack, you are saving yourself some life points. Is that worth the setup? I mean, you do get to free mill this card with the skill... So you could say that there's not really a cost to milling this card, but I think there's a cost to playing this card. I don't want this card in my opening hand. This card is crap. So um, I think that the minor benefit of saving yourself randomly with this card one time in like one out of four games is not worth the risk of opening this card. And there are better cards to free mill. It's not worth my opinion. Exactly. Quentin, Quentin, we get the third copy of Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Is that good? That's amazing. Cosmo Dark Destroyer is a very, very good card. Uh, 3,000 attack points. Pops a card on the field when it's summoned. Cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects, and it floats. This is a really good boss monster. Probably one of the better main deck boss monsters in the entire game. Having a third copy of it is amazing. It just means that we can run fewer of the bad ships. And then for level 40, we got Cosmo Dark Eclipser. Uh... Can we just pause and say that the artwork on this card is amazing? Um, Cosmo Dark Eclipser, level 9. Dark Machine. Cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effects. During either player's turn when a trap card is activated, you can banish one Cosmo monster from your graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. That is not once per turn. So, it's either player's turn, and as long as you have Cosmo monsters in your graveyard, you can just keep popping traps. So you're just not affected by traps. Is that good? Yes, that's very good. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add one level 8 or lower Cosmo monster from your deck to your hand. That part's weird. Um, the other monsters float. This card just searches. That definitely makes it worse, but I still think it's worth playing. I mean, it's not going to float, which is kind of bad for Cosmo because they pay so many life points. 
but realistically, this card will end the game if you can get it on the field, just because it prevents your opponent from interacting with you. So I think it's fine as like a, an option. You don't have to play the card even if you have it in your hand. You can float in other things. It's not like it's going to brick you too often. So yeah, I think this is a fine one of. Anna gets two more copies of Southern Stars, which targets a face-up monster on the field. Its level becomes 10. Is this card good? It is... It would be good in a 40-card deck. In a 20-card deck, it's not necessary. So, this is a waste. Girog gets two extra copies of Firehand. He now has three copies of Firehand. Is that good? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Everyone who plays Girog is happy. Alito. Alito gets Xyz Reflect. This is a counter trap. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated that targets a face-up Xyz monster on the field, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Then inflict 400 damage to your opponent. Is this better than Jolt Counter? Probably? People don't play Battle Traps too much anymore. Although, Jolt Counter does work on if your opponent like saves Book of Moon for the battle phase, which a lot of people do. Xyz Reflect does also work in that situation, though. There's not a lot of targeting effects for monsters that are happening these days because of all the, you know, paranoia about, uh, about Leo Dancer. But Xyz Reflect does work on a lot of spell cards and trap cards that are used a lot right now. Like, for example, um, Crackdown, uh, Compulsory Evacuation Device, and Book of Moon. It doesn't work on Ice Dragon's Prison, but Ice Dragon's Prison is still paywalled. Is this good enough? It's it's a hard card to evaluate because if it sees play in the meta, people will just start targeting the materials that you would use to make an Xyz monster instead of the Xyz monster itself. It's also a trap, which means that your opponent, if you're if you're going second, your opponent can just target the Xyz monster that turn, and you can't use it because you have to set it first. I mean, counter traps are good. I, I will say that counter traps are inherently good because they are counter traps. You can't respond to them. You can't negate them except with another counter trap. Does anyone else play counter traps? No. So this card will resolve every time that it's activated. I just don't think that you'll run it. I almost, I'm almost certain that you would rather run Xyz Block over Xyz Reflect. Because Xyz Block just negates any monster effect. And I don't think that you run both. It's not a hard once per turn, which is a nice benefit of it. But I don't think it's worth it. And there you go. That is the Zexel Level Ups. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Serafi, and I was thrilled to have you all with me.